Welcome back now in the Weekend AM Kitchen. Today we are baking you some gluten-free, nutty and salty caramel cookies. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Patrick Ryan from Firehouse Bakery in Delgany joins us. Good morning, Patrick. Good morning, morning, Patrick. You brought the goodies, you brought the yeah. cookies. But I you know did. what? Well, there are people now sitting up going, hang on, they're gluten-free? Because as a parent of a celiac child, I know there's people in the building here, some of our, our gang, our researchers and that, celiacs, they're going, happy days, finally a gluten-free recipe. Yeah, well, and what, they're gorgeous. there was about a dozen of these before we started and we're down to well, the Well, I can't, three or four <laughs> I can't, uh, there's nothing to do with no, me. Nothing no, 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 to do with no, crumbs no. on your, no. actually just wipe some crumbs out of his eyebrows, <laughs> yeah, yeah. weirdly enough. <laughs> right, what okay. do we start with, Chef? Yeah, so basically we're going for some, yeah, more and more people are starting to suffer uh, going gluten free, suffering from allergies, particularly with wheat and gluten. Mm. But we're, so we're going to do some uh, little gluten free cookies, but we're not cutting out any of the indulgence. No. You will no. not even know that these are gluten free. We're not compromising anything. Mm. So basically, we're going 110 uh, grams of butter, 110 grams of sugar. Because Patrick, you often hear chefs saying, oh God, this, you know, gluten free, it's the nightmare of chefs. But the reality of it is now more and more people being diagnosed, you guys have to get on with it. Yeah, it you is. You have to provide a gluten-free option. It is, and it really is. And it, it's not, I thought actually really that hard once you kind of get your head in. This yeah. recipe actually originally would have been, and it works perfectly well with your a regular standard cooking yeah, yeah. But we've actually just converted it over. Okay. Okay. It works right. absolutely amazing. And there isn't a, a taste or a quality difference? You, you won't know. No. Well, I'm telling you, like, as you said to me earlier on, when I had one of those with a cup of tea earlier, if you'd, it didn't tell me it was gluten free, you wouldn't know. No, no, and no. that's the real test, isn't it, Patrick? Yeah, so that, that, it just happens to be. So a big thing when it comes to making any cookies is you really need to work the butter and the sugar to get it really, really well. Right. If you mix it by hand using the mixer, basically, because if you don't cream the butter and sugar mm. together, often what can happen is the sugar leaks as it bakes and kind of All crystallizes. Right. All right, um, that ain't good. So just really working it together. Ideally, your butter at room temperature. We're dropping one egg. Just one egg. That's it. Okay. Just give a little scrape on the side. Very good. Get everything into the party. Now these little ones we're actually going to do with a little bit of indulgence. We're actually going to add a little bit of salt and caramel into our mix. Don't don't say little. Don't say okay, little. Okay, no, <laughs> don't be using words like little when you're saying adding indulgent ingredients. Well, when I say little, I don't really mean little. Yeah, I know you don't. Um, yeah, yeah. Now again, now we're using some salted caramel. Oh, yeah. um, now for people at home who may not have it, works great, like just a mashed banana, a little bit of maple syrup, oh, works yes. perfectly fine. So you can kind of improvise a little bit. Yeah. So we've simply got about 90 grams of caramel. Very nice. This is just going to work into our mix. That's into great. Mix. So a mashed banana and maple syrup, and you have a it, substitute. It, 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 it's a substitute, yeah. Oh, it works really well. Yeah, yeah. um, I've done this recipe with both, and it works really, really well. So just give it a really good mix, just combine everything together. Good. So then, very simply, it's not the core of it? Handy if you have one of those for the mixing. Oh, yeah. Oh, so we'll go in with a little half teaspoon of cinnamon. Very nice. Half teaspoon of baking powder. Very nice. And we're going for a little bit of sea salt. A uh, little flakes, this gives it a lovely little salty. It works really great with the chocolate. Mm. Chocolate and salt are, are, are friends of each other, aren't they? They are, they work absolutely amazing. 20 grams of cocoa powder. And then we're just using some um, gluten-free flour. Like, you pick it up in any supermarket. Like, it's plain white. It's kind of a blend of different kind of yeah. rice flour. Um, <clears throat> different. So, basically, we're just going straight in. 125 grams. Yeah, those sections in the supermarkets now are growing. The oh, free farm huge. ones. Yeah. They are growing huge. Growing, yeah, huge. And we'll pop the recipe up on the website, uh, Chef, so people can follow us. And then home. we're literally going straight in with 100 grams of chocolate chips. Oh. Now, you're going to find that this mix, as we bring it together, it's actually quite soft. Right. So you'll see it now. And is, it, is that unusual? No, it's, it's basically it's just the nature of the mix. So if you were trying to work that now, you'd find it very, very difficult. Right. So ideally, you pop that into a container, into the fridge for a couple of hours. Right, and then it's set a bit. Firm it firms up a bit. it up. It just makes it much more workable. Overnight works absolutely great. <clears throat> okay. Okay. How many will we? Not that it's all about the volume, but how many will we get out of that? <laughs> yeah. Depends how, how big. How many are we going to have for lunch? Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, you're, you're looking from at least a good 16, 18 cookies. Nice. Really oh, wow. The kind of quantities. But the, we like but the great thing about this little kind of cookie dough, so it's just literally little, little balls. Is all we're looking to do. Okay. 
And you're going to preheat your oven to what? So, so we've the oven heated now to 180, or sorry, 160. So that's nice and low, isn't it? Yeah, because it's quite, it's quite delicate. So this cookie, they're probably like, it's kind of a fusion between a cookie and a brownie. Um, okay. well, if, if this had standard flour on it, would it be the same temp anyway? It is, yeah, no, it's baked on the thing. It's nothing to do not, with not, the, okay. not because of gluten-free. So basically, once it firms up, you can find it, it's much more pliable, much easier yeah. to work How long with. did you have that in the fridge for? Um, now, I would just made that last night. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, the mix will actually keep for three or four days in the fridge, right. but you can actually roll it into little balls, which then we're taking some chopped pecan nuts. Oh, very good. And we're going to coat them oh, in the nuts. And like this really just gets better and better. Roll the nuts into it. And do you, is it important you leave a bit of space when you're... They, they do spread because, because they will... You'll see now the size they are here. Yeah, yeah. This is the size they would have began at. Right, OK. But you're not going to press them into that shape? Uh, we will slightly now, just in a second. All right, OK. So, great thing you can do again with these, you can actually make a batch of these, roll them into the nuts and actually pop them in the freezer. And they'll keep them for up to three months. That's great. Okay. And then you can just pull them out as you need them. And could you use other nuts? Completely, yeah. yeah. If, you don't, if, if, you, if you want to avoid nuts, leave them out. Um, yeah. If you want hazelnuts, walnuts, um, completely oh, walnuts up to yourself. Nice, yeah. Add a nice little texture. And then just before we prepare them, roll them in some icing sugar. Oh. And really kind of press the icing sugar into them. So that's what kind of gives us our lovely little... Dusting. That's a lovely finish, isn't it? Yeah. Across the top of it. Right. Nice. So again, now, so if you were doing them from the freezer, don't do the icing sugar bit. Leave that till just before they go in the oven. So you right. just, at this stage, do just pop into a little container. Okay. And nice. keep Something absolutely else. great. Okay. And then literally, all you would do is squash them down ever so slightly. Very yeah, good. Your cookie shape, yeah. And how long are we going to cook them for? So then, basically, we're only baking for like ten minutes. Ah, right. So as, once you go to take them from the oven, you'll probably find they're a little bit gooey, a little bit soft, mm. but just leave them be. And we let them sit on the tray for about... Let them basically cool fully on the tray, not about another 10 minutes. That's the hard oh, bit. Okay. Yeah, yeah, waiting. Yeah, yeah waiting. Because aren't they lovely when they're gooey? <laughs> oh, yeah. But they burn the mouth off you. But they'd be brittle, so you have to... Patience. Yes, sir. So Patience. These, cool, right? these were baked a little <laughs> bit earlier, and they were just left oh. sitting um, in the oven just to firm up a little bit. Mm. So that, you can see they've still got a little soft kind of yeah. gooey. So have they oh, expanded somewhat in the oven? That's exactly the same size that they've right, got so, in. So wow, basically, as okay. they grow, they're going to strip it quicker. With the heat. All right. So these, two, honestly, these cookies are just best enjoyed as close as you can out of the oven. You kind of find as they keep, they don't really keep great because they start to soften during the day. Right, to yeah. be fair, I don't think they're going to hang around too long. No, no. Well, you have turkey when you come in, there's far left. And so we've so we've got a little bit of salt caramel in our mix. Yeah. And then just to give a proper little. Yeah, that takes it to another level. Uh, Visually, yeah. certainly, and I'm sure in taste too. Oh, yeah. There's only one way to find out. OK, then. <laughs> right, Go so ahead, sir. I don't need a palette knife. I'm going straight now. <laughs> I don't care how hot they are. So, yes, yeah, so, oh, so, nice so, so easy to make. Completely gluten-free. You wouldn't mm. even notice the difference. <laughs> Thank you, Chef. Oh. Um, as ever, uh, full recipe details are on our website, or you can save yourself the hassle and just call into Patrick at the Firehouse Bakery to try them for yourself. They're amazing, Patrick. Now, after the break, how to get holiday hair like Lucy from Love Island. We're on the edge of the seat oh for this God. one. We'll see you soon. Mm.